Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is paper tree section B uh, answering technique. Okay, uh, the reason why I didn't do it with section A because the video are a bit too long. So you can also watch this video in a very short time as well. Okay, let's move on because it will be the same material as I mentioned. If you didn't know what I'm saying, please watch back to my first video. Okay, so section B in total, we have 17 marks. These 17 marks come from six questions, okay? All of the questions give you three marks besides the last question. The last question is two marks. How do you want to answer section B question? It's very simple, okay? Over here, the first question is problem statement. How to write problem statement? Only have to write, does and B affect RV? Without question mark, no mark, right? Question mark is very, 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 very important. Huh? Remember the question mark, okay? You can write, does MB or how does MB affect RV? So, Paper three most important thing is what? Find the correct MB and RV. If you're able to find the correct MB and RV, you are easily settled, to, very, very steady already. Like, like steady from PP, okay? Just find the correct MB and RV, okay? Next one, we have hypothesis. What is hypothesis? As I mentioned in section A, you can write higher MB, higher RV, or vice versa. If your MB got no value, then cannot write higher MB, higher RV. You have to choose the highest or the lowest to write. For the hypothesis, it's only one sentence only, okay? One sentence, three marks, okay? Next one, we have variables. Only write MB, RV, and CV. Don't have to write method to handle. By writing MB, RV, and CV, you get one mark each, okay? And apparatus and material, you can write it together. You can write it separately. It's your choice. Huh? In chemistry, I remember that you have to separate it. In biology, we don't have to. But if you want to separate them, also can. So it's your choice to do it. And then we have procedure. Actually, procedure, I have a lot of, uh, I have a lot of students who ask me, teacher, how to write procedure? Teacher, should I memorize procedure? Guys, don't memorize the procedure unless you have a lot of free time after your SPM paper two because paper two and paper three, I think you have like one hour gap, right? If you have time and you don't know what to do, of course you can go and memorize right after paper two because as a normal procedure in paper three, right? You have eight to 10 sentence. This eight to 10 sentence maximum mark is three marks, guys. You know what is three marks or not? Because you have to divide, right? It's 1.5 marks. 1.5 marks equivalent to three objectives. If you get three objectives correctly, you get these three marks. So that's why don't spend time memorizing the procedure. I would rather you to memorize the essay question. I would rather you to do more, do more paper one question. You can get 50 or 50, that would be the best, okay? It's better than you memorizing the procedure. It's, I wouldn't say it's a waste of time, but I, I think that it's not worth it. It's not worth it to memorize these three things, okay? It's for these three marks or 1.5 marks. If you memorize like 20, 30 sentences for AC question, then easily you will get 10 to 20 marks for the 20, 30 sentences. Uh. So that one is more worth it compared to you memorizing the procedure. Don't memorize the procedure. What is the fastest way to learn the procedure? Number one, you watch videos, okay? How they carry out the experiment. Number two, you look at the picture, the photo, how they carry out the picture so you can visualize the thing. Uh, depending on which, which type of student you are, is either you are the one who watch the video or you, you are the one who look at the diagram. So it's your choice. Uh. So procedure number one, don't have to draw one. If you want to draw, also can, because drawing, it makes you to remember how does, how does, uh, how does uh, the experiment work. Right? If you want to draw, also can. Uh, okay, it's your choice. In procedure, what does the markers want? The marker look at the 5K. K1, K2, K3, K4, K5. The reason why I didn't put it in sequence, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, is because this is how you usually write the procedure sequence, okay? K1 is preparing of the material and apparatus. K2 is how you maintain the constant variable. K3 is how you record and measure the constant variable. K4 is how you how you control or how you repeat the experiment with the different manipulated variable. K5 is to repeat the experiment and also the precaution. So we have 5K. Preparation, CV, RV, MV, and the precaution. So in total, we have five. Okay, this is our 5K. So at least you must have three to four K1. And then the rest, at least one. So you're going to have about seven or eight sentences at least per procedure, so per experiment, I would say. So your sequence is like that. First, you prepare the material and you prepare the apparatus, how you want to do it and so on, set up the apparatus and so on. Okay. Second sentence, you have to control your constant variable and you have to measure the initial reading. So no matter whether it's a reading or whatever, okay, you have to record the initial reading. And then the next one, you have to make sure you have precaution. Okay. Later, we will uh, give you an example. What is the precaution for that? And then K3 is you measure and record the, the result using the apparatus. If there is a formula, then you have to apply it. You write the formula up. If there's no formula, then you don't have to apply it. Don't have to add the formula, okay? K4 is to repeat the step with different manipulated variables. So 
when you talk about repeating step with different angle, right? You have to make sure that your constant variable is the same. You cannot change your constant. Okay, if it's five minutes, means it's five minutes. If it's ten minutes, means ten minutes. You cannot change the constant when you want to repeat the step. Okay, K five is to repeat the experiment until you get the average feeding. K one is going back to the data, record data and tablet data. So this is your procedure. What you're gonna write? K one two two five three four. Uh, one two two five three four five one okay so this is the sequence that you should you should remember lah okay just remember one two two five three four five one then in exam you can just write in the, this in sequence then you will don't get it wrongly as well and then we have presentation of data data is very easy just draw a table your title unit and there will be no result okay there will be no result there so this is basically the procedure and paper tree let's look at one question so you can apply this knowledge in the question this question also did not came out in SPM before, so you can take note where this is the question. Cigarette smoke contains harmful chemicals which damage the respiratory system and increases the temperature of the respiratory tract. Based on the above information, plan a laboratory experiment to study the effect of different number of cigarettes and the temperature of the respiratory tract. So in the question, right, uh, thank God that this question is not long, it's quite short, right? So find your MV and RV in the question. How to find usually is the word behind Study of the effect or whatever over here, okay, the word behind will be the MV and RV. Different number of cigarettes, actually it's number of cigarettes, okay. Number of cigarettes is your MV, okay. Temperature on the respiratory tract is your ORV. Why is this ORV? Because as I mentioned, right, ORV is the one that you learn in your textbook. This is an experiment, huh? will you use a human respiratory tract to carry out this experiment? Obviously, no one. So you're going to use a replacement to replace the respiratory tract. So in this case, you will use a U-tube. Not U-tube, but a U-tube, a U-shaped tube, but you call it U-tube, okay? So temperature of respiratory tract, this is your responding variable. It's the one that you use it in your experiment. This is what we call responding variable, okay? Done, okay? Now, you're going to write your problem statement, hypothesis, and so on. They will give you what you need to write in exam. Lah. So the first one is problem statement, as I mentioned. How to write a problem statement? You have to write, does... MV affects RV, right? So you can see does MV affects RV or ORV also can remember the question mark. No question mark, no mark. Huh? By writing this one sentence, huh, it's three marks, guys. Easy peasy, three marks. Huh? Next one, hypothesis. This question, MV got value or not? Number of secret is a value, right? So you can write when the number of secret, which is MV, increases, the temperature of YouTube, RV, increases as well. Okay, next one, manipulated variable, just fill in the blanks. You have your MV and RV. Constant variable, you can write type of secret use. I think this is the most common answer when people write type of what, type of what, okay? And you can write length of secret. Please don't write the brand of the secret. Hopefully that you guys still do know what is the brand of a secret. So please don't write the brand of a secret. Use the length of a secret. And then you have the apparatus and material. You have secret, white cotton wool, YouTube, thermometer, rubber tube, filter pump. So this is the apparatus and material. Please remember, is that you want to write it together or you want to write it separately also can, it's your choice. Procedure, okay, you follow this step here, then you're gonna get the an answer here. Okay, how does this experiment work? Okay, this is a YouTube. Okay, there's a there's a filter pump and you have a queue here, right? Okay, so you put a secret here. First, set up the apparatus law. You have to make sure that is uh, you fix the constant variable. Number one, you measure the thermometer readings in the initial value. You have to place the secret 5 cm at one end of YouTube. So you make sure that it's 5 cm distance, it's also a constant variable. And then you will start carrying out the experiment. So how do you want to carry out the experiment? You like up the light, you like up the cigarette, and you place your finger at Q. It's like a human smoking. Lah. So you can see that it's going in for the cigarette. So you, you put your finger at Q. So it's like a human smoking. And what is the precaution here? The precaution here is you have to make sure that the cigarette is fully burnt. This is a precaution, it's fully burnt. Then you record your RV by using the thermometer. And then you repeat your step two to step six by replacing two to three cigarettes with the same type of length. Okay, you repeat with the same type of cigarette and same type of length, and you repeat until you get the average reading. You record the data. So actually, I've colored it according to the K one to K five. So if you don't know, you can pause the video and read this thing and read this as well. How does this thing works? Now? So you understand how do you write the K one to K five? Okay, and then the last one is what. Data presentation. As I mentioned, if it's a data presentation, you draw a table, but please remember to write unit, 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 and there will be no value, guys, because this is a planning experiment. 
Telling experiment shouldn't convince of any value. If you start to fill in the value, uh, confirm your answer is wrong. Either one mark or no mark. So please don't fill in the blanks, okay? This is the result. So I have a lot of students who ask me, should I write present tense or past tense? This is a planning experiment. Uh, usually I will write um, present tense uh, because it's a planning experiment. If you use past tense, I think it should be fine as well uh, because it's biology, uh, it's not... It's not English, ma, so it's better for you to write present tense in this case. So this is paper three, section B. You can try to apply this technique in all of the questions so you will know that actually it's not hard to score paper three. You should have scored it 50 over 50. That would be the best or at least 45 marks above in paper three. Then it's very easy for you to score A already. Okay, so this is paper three. If you have any question, you can ask me, you can comment below. If not, then I will see you guys in the next video. If you like the video, please like, comment, and share. Bye, guys. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.